Hey there everybody. This might actually end up being a multi-part tutorial. It's going to be on how to create a website. Some of you have been asking me how to create a website, so I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to be doing this via a Mac's perspective, so we're going to actually be using iWeb. Um, and if, if there's a whole lot of Windows, out, Windows users out there who do end up contacting me, I'll go through a perspective, perspective of Dreamweaver. Um, but we'll use iWeb. So the first thing you need is a domain name. A domain name is something like facebook.com. That name is called the domain name. In my case, it's jpfilms.info. When you go there, it contacts a web host, which hosts the data under that name. So all of my website is stored on a web host. I found a free web host, and it's the best one I've managed to find, and they're called 000, not OOO, but 000webhost.com. They're 100% free, no hidden um, tricks or whatever those are called. There's nothing hidden about them. They are literally $0.00 web host. They give you a, gig a, a gigabyte and a half of space, which is plenty for a website, a gig 100 gigabytes of data transfer, which means you can have pretty high traffic. They are 99% uptime, so that means they're rarely ever uh, working on the websites where they're down, um, and if you go to the website, you can't access it. Uh, and, and it's just really, really perfect. And if you decide to go unlimited, 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 it's only five bucks a month. So it's really worth it. And you get a free website builder, so if you are a Windows user and don't have iWeb because you can't have iWeb, you can use their website builder. Um, they've got tons of features, so go ahead and sign up. Um, to sign up, you can click sign up, or if you're already a member, go to members.00webhost.com and log in. So I've got three websites registered under this host right now. So we're going to create a new website. Now, if you want your own domain name, such as jpfilms.info or jpfilms.ca.com, whatever, go with, make a new tab, go to godaddy.ca or .com, depending on where you are in the world. If you're in the States, go to .com. If you're in Canada, go to .ca. And search for the domain you want. Let's go with, um, you think... You're so hot.com. You think you're so hot.com. So actually, you think you're so hot.com is available. And if watch, if you try to go, you think you're so hot.com, it shouldn't go anywhere. It should just tell you it doesn't exist because it doesn't actually exist. And you've probably noticed that if you go to one of those websites like favebook.com or you just misspell something like Google, you can even misspell, it takes you to a spam website that looks like this and you wonder well what if what if you actually want to buy favebook.com if we search favebook.com you'll notice that it's taken somebody has actually purchased favebook.com and is using it to host ads yeah it's a uh, it's already taken and they're using it for ads now J if we search jpfilms.ca we can see that jpfilms.info has been taken. Let's find info. Info. It's been taken. It's red because it's been taken. If you hit back order, that means that when my uh, year expires, you can uh, come in and order it and steal it from me. So it's really like bidding. Um, we see that jpfilms.ca is available for $13.21 per year. Currently for .info, I am paying $1.07 a year, or actually, I'm really paying uh, $0.89 cents or something like that. It's, it's crazy cheap. After you've bought your website, you can uh, enter it in here, or if you don't want to purchase a website and want to go with your domain name dot site fifty dot net. You'll probably remember if you see up here jpfilms dot site eighty eight dot net. That's what this used to be. These change constantly. If we refresh, it'll probably change again. But I like site fifty. So go ahead and make your own domain name. Let's go with jpfilms again. jpfilms dot site fifty dot net, and the password can be jpfilms one two three. Set up new account. Oh, sweet, we're all created. So this is the information here you're going to need. This information is accessible in the future if you don't save this right now. It's always going to be accessible on this website 
we'll just go ahead and view list accounts and we see jpfilms.site50.net. If we click go to cPanel, the information is available in the side here. We see we have used nothing of our 1500 megs. So now, you're probably wondering, well, how do I get this site up and running? Because if we go to jpfilms.site50.net right now, we're going to receive a page that says it's up and running, but you can't do anything. So this information here, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to do. You need to download something called an FTP client that allows you to access all the information on your website. If you're a Mac, download the application called CyberDuck. CyberDuck.ch is their website. So there we go, we see another interesting domain name, .ch. You're going to download CyberDuck, and what that allows you to do is access your server. If you're a, a Windows user, download FileZilla, F-I-L-E-Z-I-L-L-A, FileZilla. Okay, download that. So once you've got it, go ahead and open it. So we're going to open up CyberDuck, and while it's opening, copy the username field up here. Copy it, good, got it copied. Wait for CyberDuck. Usually it doesn't take this long. Oh, there we go. <laughs> CyberDuck. Okay, perfect. And you're going to click Open Connection. Oh, click Open Connection. This username field, paste what I, what I told you to copy. The password is John Tap. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was JP Films. One, two, three, and the server is. You can either type in John Tap uh, at site 50, or you can do the IP address, which is much faster. So copy this IP address, the server's IP address, paste it in on there, and hit Add to Keychain so it remembers it for the future, and hit Connect, and you will see. Ready? We are ready. We are in. Just like that, we are now on the root of our website. So anything you see here, anything you modify inside the public HTML file, this default.php is this page right here. If we delete that, that will go away. Or do whatever. You can delete the do not upload here file. It's not necessary. I'm going to open up public HTML. We see default. Oh, let me show you what happens. I'll refresh right now. You can see it's still there. Ready? I'll delete it. Delete and it's gone. I'll refresh and we should see the words index of slash. That's because there's literally nothing inside our website. It is a blank website. So let's go ahead and put something in there. In the past I've created with Dreamweaver a very nice under construction page. Website core. Um, it's a very nice under construction page that I created a while back. It's called index.php. This is the contents of it. It shows a picture with the words, I'm under construction, be patient. It's most likely some error with my host, sad face. So this, this is what it is, and uh, let's go ahead and throw that in there. So if you click and drag it, it's going to pop up with a new window saying it's transferring it, and it's complete. Done. So just like that, now we'll go refresh our website. Just to let you know, the word index is very important in website uh, terminology. The word index means core or root. Anything named index.html, PHP, is the main file that will always open when you go to the website. If it's named something else, you'll, you'll get the index of with options to go to that page, but it won't display it right away. We refresh and we should receive the under construction. Be patient. Sad fate. The, the, sad end, the image. And then it's most likely somewhere with my host. So there's that page. That's, it's that fast. And you'll notice that right now if I right click, rename, and we call this uh, Peter, first name that came to mind, peter.php, we refresh, we'll receive index of and the option to view it. Click it, it loads. So index shows it immediately compared to um, having to click that, which never what you never see. Alright, there we go. We'll refresh and it should just come up. And there we go. We, we've accomplished the website basics of logging into your website and being able to modify core files inside. Let's get into the actual design now. Follow me over to part two by clicking the link. The link you probably see right now. 
you should probably click that link. You're moving like a snail if you have not clicked that link.